money. Joey, five double low. Got some goats in the field. Get ready for a shakedown. Prepare for a shakedown. We from Philly where they clap like huddles when they break down. Get ready for a shakedown. We underdogs, my guy. Kinda used to all the hate now. Prepare for a man, y'all get it. My QB got swag, my wideout is award winning. This fly was fly. Joey and 5 double O. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Here's a quote you can sing back. Shake squad up and don't be a dingbat. It's a shakedown. Don't you frown. It's Get your shake down. Let's go. You're right the way, King Dingbat here, and welcome to another Philly Shakedown podcast. I don't even remember what the hell we're doing. Dude, it's been crazy trying to open this thing. We've been trying to figure out how to put something, load a picture on the stream yard. I can't figure it out. Joey can't figure out. We're dumb. Yeah, we're, we're dumb. dumb. But Joey, how are you doing today, my man? I'm doing good, bro. I'm 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 getting ready. I'm getting ready for the quietness because that's what what that's the time we're coming upon with the NFL offseason before trade it's camp. So vastly approaching, my friend. I'm pouring myself a drink because it's been one of them days. Mm-hmm. What is going on, everybody? Is in the chat. Um, uh, hit the gritty. I don't know. I never heard that name, but it's awesome. Oh, it used to be Lighten. Okay. Yeah. Samuel, James, Joe Marucci, Nina. What's going on? Joe Higashi, legit laid kick, kick is here. Cryptologist Marcus, what is going on, everybody? Sorry if I missed you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, man, we're entering the quiet time, really. I mean, the Eagles have finished OTAs. They only had six, Joey, and they finished OTAs, and we didn't, we're done until training camp. Until yeah. training camp. Yeah, That's it's crazy, right? Yeah, I know. I think that now they 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 lessen the OTAs, no mini camp. They don't have to wait until July twenty sixth. So hopefully, I mean, do you agree they should have had more time, or you think they should have added some more practices, or no? You know, uh, I was asked this the other day, Dan Cilio, Shout out to him. Um, he asked me this, and, and my thoughts are this: I'm okay with six OTAs if if that's all you have, as long as they play in the preseason. If if they're sitting all preseason and playing what one series, then I, I I have a problem with it, you know. But as long as they play in the preseason, I'm okay with it. Would say you? No, I no, I agree. I mean, look, as as much as I want a little bit more time, and I'm not saying they had to go 100, percent even if they had mini camp, but kind of taking the mini camp away, I guess I, I feel like the I feel like the less time that they do have, the more now they you know maybe more injuries will occur. Like that's what I'm hoping it that does not happen because I feel like you know well the more they practice, the more they get hurt. I think it's I think it's the total opposite sometimes. Just depends. I feel like I feel like the more you worry about injuries happening, then they occur. You know, like, like it, it just, it just seems like that. Like, how come back in the day when you had, like, when I was growing up and you were growing up, I'm sure, like, they had, we had two days in the summer, early summer, we had two yeah. days, and there seemed like there was less injuries than there are now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it, it's it's kind of crazy. It's kind it's kind of crazy. Okay. And, and and I see everybody's pouring in. It's it's good to see everybody. Joe Ennis, Dave Edwards, uh, Marcus. Uh, Philly badass. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I haven't done a stream since the last Philly shakedown. It's been that kind of busy for me, man. Um, one of the things that came out of the OTAs, though, that I want to talk to you about is yep. Jalen Hurts, right? Jalen Hurts was one of the, the things that pretty much people were impressed with coming out. He changed his throwing motion. Uh, he was been throwing some deep balls, looks like. That's much improved. Yes, we got no pads on, all those, you know, things. They got to play. You got to get hit. But what are your thoughts from what you've heard of uh, uh, Jalen Hurts so far? Uh, I mean, even I heard his arm is looking really good. I mean, he's, you know, throwing to Miles Sanders really well, throwing to the running backs. I mean, his deep ball looks really good. From what we're hearing from Nick and Shane Steichen right now, his arm has improved by a mile. I mean, not talking like 10%. I mean, it, it has uh, – he's taken that step forward and – you know, I got to see this, you know, hearing it is great, you know, and th- what they're going to tell the media is what they're going to tell the media. They're not going to throw him under the bus or say he's throwing really bad, but uh, I-, I feel like I have a, a, gu- a good gut feeling that he is, he is throwing very well. And I think it was only, I think all of OTAs, I think it was only like maybe one or two incompletions, maybe, maybe not even that. So I, he, he, he did really well his OTAs. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's what they said. Look, you can't can't put a lot of stock into OTAs. I I, I totally get it, you know. Um, but there are certain things that that you can tell, right? And I think his throwing motion, the fact that he's he's throwing seems like a better deep ball. I think that's a big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, totally uh, agree. I definitely do. You know, Shane H says feeling 2017 vibes. Jalen Hurts is the ultimate underdog. Let's go, Birds. Uh, look, he is. I mean, geez. I mean, here's a guy that that was drafted as the backup, and now you know, now he's he, he's potentially the franchise quarterback. Time, time will tell, though. You know, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I I don't know. Do you think? Do you think that uh, he needs a statistical number or a certain amount of wins? What does he need to be the franchise guy? I think we need to do the eye test. I think we need to see a vast improvement uh, with his throwing anticipation on throws. I think they have to win the NFC East. I think they at least have to win a playoff game. I mean, they show potential, and you're going to give this guy forty to forty-five million dollars a year. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. As you know, that's that's the big question right now. I don't think you need that much statistics, but yeah, I would like him to throw, you know, thirty-six hundred to thirty-eight hundred yards. You know, uh, you know, uh, twenty-eight to thirty-five touchdowns, something like that. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe yeah. nine to ten rushing touchdowns. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you need to do. Uh, definitely, and and there was an interesting picture that I wanted to show that this is what we couldn't <laughs> figure out how to get to work. Um, but there's a picture they were showing today that's going around, and I'll put it in the Philly Shakedown clips that we do. Um, it's I guess it had last year's picture of, of last year Jalen Hurts, and then they had a picture of this year's Jalen Hurts. And right. it, dramatic, Joey, what would you say about these pictures? You know, he got he got bigger. Pause. Joey we like the striation. <laughs> The striation. He got, he got, I mean, I'm trying to say it without making it sound weird, but he you got a pause, dude. Pause. I, I I did pause. Uh, he he did. Uh, yeah, he his his arms look bigger. I mean, he his, yeah. his chest does. I mean, he looks like he's been working his tail. Uh, yeah, it sounds great and all. Pause, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, shit. I know, right? I, I I hear you. Joey's getting all rattled. You see that he's losing his mic. I'm Things good. are I'm happening good. over there. No, but but in all seriousness, uh, yeah, he, he looks like he's in great shape. Um, but until he takes the field, until he's on the field, we're, you know, then we're going to find out, you know. Joe Marucci says, I'm a firm believer if an injury is going to happen, it's going to happen. Can't worry about that. Just come together and uh, as a team, however it takes. I agree. I, I, I think you can't, you can't worry about injuries like um, – happening because they're going to happen i think you 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 do certain things like you know last game of the season you already clinched a playoff spot you can't help you sit a guy i I totally get it last preseason game you sit him but i think they got to play these guys especially jalen hurts i think he has to play in preseason man He's not going to play. I think, well, but they're not. I feel like they're not, they're going to have been for two. Like I think we've talked about it a million times. They're going to have been for two series, and then that's it. If this was me right now with three preseason games, which I'm really happy that's not four anymore. It's three since last year. So you'd start them for a couple series. The first game, make the second game the dress rehearsal. Put them in for a half if you have to, and then the third game just sit them. I, I because you don't want this kid to be rusty first game because I feel like if they sit him, right? It's it's. I think he's going to be rusty first game unless they. Yeah. Do well, you know the thing is. It's funny about it because I I think the same thing. I was thinking the same thing last year, but then they go out against Atlanta and they and they, and they smoked Atlanta. Yeah. They just, I mean, he looked great. So it's like you know, who knows? All, all I can say, like summing up about Jalen Hurts and the OTA so far, is that it seems like every step he's needed to take this off season, it looks like he's done it. Plus, right. you add more weapons, and all of a sudden, um, hey, listen. You, you got something there, you know? Yeah, right. um, the only thing I do want to talk about, too, before we, you know, we, we kind of talk about something else is Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown. There were reports that maybe the chemistry does not look as good as maybe people would hope or there was work to do. Are you concerned in any way about that? No, I think it's I think that due in time, I think it's just gonna get better. Yeah, it wasn't a great OTAs between AJ Brown and Jalen Hurts because I think he overthrew him a couple times. Right. And there were there wasn't a great I think him and Devontae Smith connected really well. And you know, AJ Brown and him been working out the past few off seasons, you know, since right. he's been in the league. So I mean it's just we're early in the stages right now, guys. I wouldn't panic about it. I, I think it's just it's gonna come naturally. Once Miami comes into town, we have the scrimmages and you know, I think with more time, I think they're gonna be fine. 
I might. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. I, I think Hertz is going to go out. I think he's going to have a great year. I'm I'm expecting t- over 25 touchdowns. So mm-hmm. we'll see. But so far, he he is where we need him to be at coming out of OTAs. You know, sure that. Philly Jim, thank you for the super chat, my man. Shout out to Philly Jim. Go sub him up if you haven't. Uh, he says, "What uh, what up, guys? How you feel about Deshaun Jackson calling out McNabb? Have a good show, guys. Thank you, my man." Um, I, I, you know, it's not surprising to me. It's not surprising at all. You know, no, I mean, for a guy, I mean, with Deshaun Jackson said it was, you know, being, you know, going to his uh, pro, to pro bowl for two positions. And then, you know, this is McNabb calling out Deshaun Jackson being as his wide receiver, kind of alarming. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, striations, baby. You know about the striations and the chest and the body. Uh, us mm. bodybuilders know about that. You know, Jalen Hurts had a lot of striations. <laughs> Us bodybuilders. <laughs> Jalen striation hurts, baby. You know what I'm saying? I that's that's what I'm saying. Speaking of the, the brother screwed us, I, I got something really quick on that. Really quick. Hold on. I have to because I have to set it up for the outro that I forgot to set it up. So you guys are going to see Not it. You will say that till later, but... Oh, I wanted to get that out there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so let me catch up with some of these chats because this is going kind of quick here. We've got 270 people on a Saturday night. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Click the link in the description. Go sub up my man, Joey Shake. So one thing I wanted to say, uh, too, is last week you guys probably saw, like, a lot of these, like, Philly Shakedown clips. That's something that we're going to be doing every week. Um, there's a lot of people who ask us to do these because they can't watch the whole show or they, you know, they're not here live. So you may start seeing those. One of the things that we will do differently than last week is we both were posting them up and people felt like they were watching the same thing over and over again. We're not going to do that. So we'll have different clips for each channel. So I just want to let you guys know that that'll be out there and that's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but it's mainly for the people that aren't here that, that haven't got a chance to watch it, you know. Exactly. You know, let's see here. Tyler says, people acting like Rodgers never overthrew Adams or Brady never overthrew Mike Evans. You know, Philly fans, like, like we're, we're so on edge. We're so excited about this season that, that we're looking for anything to, to gauge whether it's going to be successful or not. I, I don't worry about OTAs and the overthrows. And, and we mentioned, you know, A.J. Brown and connection. I don't worry about any of those kind of things. Uh, not even in the preseason, let alone OTAs. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're not saying that Jalen Hurts isn't going to make mistakes either, because I mean, he he will. I mean, you know, it's due to happen. He's, like, I don't think anybody's perfect. You know, guys are going to yeah. make mistakes. So, yeah, exactly. Now, uh, you know, we did talk a little bit about AJ Brown. I, I want to bring him up again because there's a couple things that happened. Right last week, uh, I think it was during our show, they were playing a softball game, and he called out Micah Parsons. He told him to get his popcorn ready, right? And then, um, and then he he missed a few cans. We had the reports that, that you know him and Hertz may not be on the same page. But I think when you look at the AJ Brown sign, the, the trade, I feel like like flashbacks of To. Like I think this guy is already making a huge impact for the Eagles. Not only being on the team, but around you know the way he carries himself, the swagger. And and I I feel like it's catching on with the other players. I think part of it is a big chip on his shoulder, too, even leaving the Titans, you know, only want, wanting to give him not like high top tier receiver money, you know, wanting to give him $17 million. That wasn't enough. And, you know, a big chip on his shoulder with a, you know, with a, with a quarterback that, you know, that, you know, making a dream or, you know, a reality of playing with mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts again. And I, I think they're caught, they're coming to eat. It's going to happen. Right. Just wait. So, so what do you? How do you think they're going to use him? Because I think he's going to be used in the slot a lot more than maybe a lot of people think. I think he's he you he, in some ways he reminds me like like you can use him like a Debo Samuel in some ways. He's very physical. He breaks tackles. He's good run after the catch guy. Um, I I, I don't see him just on the outside. Like I think that that there are going to be times that he's going to be in that slot, especially maybe on third downs and stuff. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, even the red zones would be great too, being that big body guy. And depending on what they want to put Quez on the outside, totally fine with that. I mean, I think he could play both positions very well. Uh, if they, and, you know, it's really going to be up to Shane Steichen scheming these guys' play design and you know getting these guys open because honestly, yeah. it's it's how they use these wide receivers last year, and especially the right guys as Devontae to be your number one, not treat as a number one. And you know, Quez Watkins, you know, was obviously missed a lot of times last year, should have more yards. But I think they'll move. I think since last year beginning of last year they want to use these nick sirianni want to use these wide receivers as intermediate wide receivers that they're not just going to be sticking to one side god forbid there's certain matchups they want to exploit on, on the defensive side of the ball they can move everybody around they want to know every single yeah. wide receiver position so i don't i think yeah. they'll do that I, I i think i mean i think they're going i think aj brown is going to be great I, you know they like to run those end arounds they like those wide like those wide receiver screens like like he's capable of breaking all those man, I, I, God, I'm so excited about him coming. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it just, it just. Oh man, I lost my spot. I, I had a somebody had a question I was going to answer. Um, damn it! I'm sorry. I, I whoever that was, that was a great question, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, we got to get Joe Higashi legit late kicks in here. Oh, he's talking to Michael. He's talking about T. Okay, he's not talking to us. Here you go. The Eagles could do big things, but we have a trash quarterback on the team. Not going to do only so much. Listen, I, I I don't understand how people can say this guy is complete trash. Like, he did take us to the playoffs. Okay, and if you want to say, well, he beat teams with bad records, well, he still beat the teams he was supposed to beat. No, I don't think we know if he's a trash quarterback. I don't think he's a trash quarterback. I, 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 think, that's, I think that people are judging him a little too quickly. Well, and, and, well, you got to think of it like this too. Like it's not like he's had two full seasons. He's only played a year and a half of football. He was thrown in, in the fire in 2020 for four to five games, and he became the starter in 21. And this was coming off of virtual workouts and not being with the guys in the off season. Like it was a totally different world out there. I think we all know that by this time. Okay, right. you know they didn't have that camaraderie. Like they came into camp, they didn't have much time together, and. You know what I mean? Like, I think another yeah. full year. I'm not going to say, look, I've been in the middle between Jalen Hurts. I, my gut feeling says he's going to have a good year. But, you know, the, there are flaws. And I, at the end of 2021, I thought he had flaws. I thought he got better. But the flaws were still there. So, I feel like it's right. going to be a good year. Yeah, I, I, I think we don't know. I mean, I mean, legitimately got us to the playoffs last year. So, and here's the thing. If, if, he, if Jalen Hurts doesn't work out and he's struggling, I don't think it's a, 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 a remote – like, I don't think it's a far-fetched idea to say that they put Minshew in. I, I, I don't think if you get to week eight and week nine and Jalen Hurts is struggling, I, I think that they, they will, they'll pull him. I, I really do. I yeah. think it's possible. It is possible. You know? Frank, is. he says, hey, guys, great to be here on Saturday. Thank you, man. Thanks, Frank. Great to have you. Um, You know, I, I, I honestly do. I, I don't think that he, he's got such a – a, 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 a lot of weight, you know, a lot of room to, to just go out and be bad every week. They put a lot of talent around them. So if people who say that he stinks really think that, then then they should be prepared to see Minshew. If we we don't trade Minshew, which we'll get into in a second, let's get this super chat. It says, Nate, thank for super chat. He says, what up, fellas? Can't wait for the season fly, Eagles fly. Sorry I haven't been around, just needed a break from football. Keep up the great work, boys. No, man, you're all good, brother. Uh, we're glad that you're back. Everybody uh, deserves a break. It, it, it's time to get ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it's time. Thank you for Super Chat. Uh, Witch King says, I'm watching the Cowboys lose in 4K right now. Well, you'll watch them lose in 4K. They're not going to win in 4K, but they'll definitely lose. And, and I'm tr sorry. I'm trying to catch up to these chat. It's way behind. Parker, thank you for Super Chat. He says, can't wait to see Marcus Epps. Me too. Me too. Um. I think Epps will, will, will be fine. I, I, I actually trust Epps more than I trust Anthony Harris, you know. True that. But what, what I want to ask you is this week, and we haven't talked about it yet, Gardner Minshew, and we talked about him, like I think if Hurts struggles week eight, week nine, I could see a situation where they, they put Minshew in, right? I, I could totally see it. But there's also a possibility, or at least rumors came out this week, that the Eagles could look to trade him. Uh, Cowboys – a lot of people felt, a lot of Cowboy fans felt that Cowboys should pursue him. What are your thoughts on the Eagles? One, trading Gardner Minshew. Two, trading him to the Cowboys. 
Um, when it comes to Minshew, I think we've had, I mean, there was a lot of rumors even last year, even before the trade deadline with the Panthers and this, you know, this is before they got a couple of quarterbacks, but, you know, trading a second, third round pick. I think he's going to, I think he just has a lot of, I mean, this, this guy's not only cheap, you know, he's all over 900,000 for the year uh, going into this year, but I think there's going to be an opportunity to look. I, and I think, I don't, I don't know if Carson Strong is going to be the guy. Like, I think that they want to, you know, try to teach him and kind of be a better pocket guy or whatever they want to do. And uh, with the injuries and stuff, his past injury history. But I think you can actually make a trade for Minshew by the trade deadline. I feel like if somebody goes down and there's a team with desperation, I think they will pull the trigger right? because they're not going to have him after this year. So if you're not going to have him after this year, you might as well trade him. Now, to the Cowboys, I, I really don't know what to say about it. I mean – it could be – they're paying a quarterback a lot of money right now, and I don't think they're moving on from any anytime soon. Um, if you're trading with a rival team, you can't take less. you got to take more, um, a lot more. Um, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know what that trade would look like, um, but I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure why. I, it's, I, I just know. think – I just think the Cowboys – I mean to cut you off. I just think the Good. Cowboys fans can't accept reality. Like I don't think they can accept reality that yeah. the Eagles are better on paper than that, and and like now it's gotten so bad that they want our backup quarterbacks. Like they they really think that we're going to give them. Why would we give them our backup when we're better than them? We're going to go further than them. So right. I don't. I totally don't understand why the Eagles would do that. Like you said, nine hundred thousand dollars for this guy for one year. Okay. Now, I, I think the plan with Carson Strong is that he learns as a third quarterback next year. He's the backup to Jalen Hurts. Now you got your starter and you have your backup. Minshew will then hit free agency. You also heard things come out that he's not a good locker room guy. Did you hear yeah. this? Yeah. About what are your thoughts on that? Like, like he's not good. Like, where did this come from? I don't. I don't even think it's. I don't think it's so much. True. I think the only time where I can think maybe it's a problem, maybe he's discussed in the locker room that he's not happy there, or he wants to be a starter. Because I think after that Jets win, he got the juices flowing again. He got that win. He hey, he said to him, to kind of like how Nick Foles left. You know, he won a Super Bowl. And he was like, and we got to the playoffs in 2018. Was like, I could do this. I, I can go to another team. He paid his way back in the free agency, and and there yeah. he was as a Jaguars quarterback for not even a game, <laughs> but. You know, I, I feel like I, – I don't feel like – I think this is – I think it's just a tension to get hits on, on yeah. some articles, but I don't think it's anything serious, though. Well, and, and the thing is, is he – you never heard anything about him being a bad locker room guy. And, you know, he went out and he played and he went up to Nick Sirianni and said, hey, coach, what would it take for me to start? I want to start. And he said, you know, you're not going to start or whatever. I don't have any problem with that. I want a guy to be competitive, No. Well, it's not a bad thing that Gardner Minshew did that. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, I, I don't get it. Yeah, he's just taking advantage of the situation because they know that Jalen Hurts is still – they're still grooming him and they're still trying to – you know, they're, they're still – he's still learning. So, you know, Minshew – that's why I said the same thing with Joe Flacco coming here. He took advantage of the – he could have went to another team as a backup, but he came to this team because he's taking advantage of the situation of a young quarterback coming in. And that this is my – you know, and, and I could say Minshew is more of a vet now, definitely. He's had some success in the league. So I feel like he's just taking advantage of the situation. I can't blame him for that. And he's not trying to – screw Jalen Hurts over I just think it's just you know like I can come in I can play and I, I he can win us football games and that's that's it yeah. you know that's all I can so say so it. so let me ask you this question and this is just I'm just gonna throw this out, out there right mm -hmm. this is just a what if right let's say Jalen Hurts wasn't on this team or Jalen Hurts wasn't playing right and and Minshew was a starting quarterback with this roster what would you think the Eagles ceiling would be with Minshew as the starter instead of Hurts. I'd say maybe a division win if it's weak enough, and that's really it. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if if he can get past the playoff game. I don't know. I mean, I I haven't seen enough. Like, yeah, 2020 with a really bad Jags offense. You know, I, I think he did really well, and he wanted to be the starter. And this was before they drafted Trevor Lawrence, and he really he went up to the front office and was like, I I want to be the guy, and they didn't agree with him. You know, and then coming in to win a game against the Jets, you know, it, it was a good feeling for him, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's going to, it's, it's going to, I don't, I don't think he'd get as far as everyone thinks he's going to just because of his arm. I think there's a lot more to him. Like once teams start, you know, to get this blueprint on, on Minshew and they know how to defend him 
and we start losing games because of it. And we, and you know, we were really bad in the second half of a lot of games. I mean, in the first half of a lot of games, the adjustments were a huge problem, and that's on Nick right. Sirianni at the end of the day. So, right. I think, I think the the vision and, and maybe maybe getting to a playoff win, maybe, but I, I don't, I don't know. He has to play more games. He has yeah. to play a lot more games. I, I, I see Minshew – I don't see Minshew as a franchise quarterback. I, I think – and some people don't agree. I see Minshew as a very, very good, if not one of the better, backup yeah. quarterbacks in the National Football League. I will say this, though. If if Minshew was the starter, and let's say Hurts wasn't on this team, I think they could win the division and win a home playoff game. Okay. And that's exactly what I expect from Hurts this year. It's just that I think Hurts has a higher ceiling in the long run. You know, and that's the difference. I, I think Hertz's ceiling is much higher, you know? Yeah, I get it. But I, I you know, at the end of the day, I don't Minchu's gotta stay. You gotta you gotta let him be the backup and 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 then you you know you get strong ready to be the backup going forward. That's that's how I see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh Mike, I want to say get to this real quick. Uh Mike says keeping Minchu is important, very high quality backup, and we all know the valuable that can be. Yeah, right. I, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Uh, Sal Sal, they were super chat. He says, can it be football season already? Right. I know. D- I know. D- the, the last <laughs> month, like this whole time, this stretch we're going on right now, feels like the whole off season all over again. It goes that slow. It really right. does. And just as a reminder, we will be taking like, what, three weeks off in July, early July and stuff, coming back right before training camp. So, our last show for season one of, of the Philly Shakedown will be, I think, the 25th of June, I think, is the last one we're doing. And then we'll have some, some like, little clips here and there out. So look right. for those. Dave Edwards, man, thank you so much for Super Chat, my man. He says, what's up, gentlemen? What are your thoughts on Driscoll possibly taking over for Lane one day? I appreciate everything you both do. Keep up the great work, gentlemen. Thanks, man. Thank you, man, so much for Super Chat, man. What are your thoughts on Driscoll being the the right tackle. I think it's possible. If he stays healthy, I think it's possible because when they threw him into the fire, I think his rookie year, I thought he played pretty well. I think he actually, and I've said this uh, multiple times, I think Driscoll could be the future right tackle to this team. I, I think it could happen. I do. I yeah. think he's a solid right guard. I don't think I don't think he's the guy, but I think he's mm-hmm. solid. And then I think at right tackle, once Lane decides to retire, whenever that's going to be, I think Driscoll's waiting in the back end. I, I think going into this year, I think with Samalo coming back in, I think we're going to have Driscoll be that backup right guard, right tackle this year if that's the case. So I think he's just waiting for his chance. Let me let me let me ask you this: Are, are you are you concerned about Isaac Sayamalu at right guard? Um, do you think he's going to be the starter? I mean, there, there are reports, and, and it doesn't really come from Philly, but around the league, if you look at some of the national reports, everybody has Sayamalu listed as, a, as somebody the Eagles could cut still. What are your What are your thoughts on that? I, I can't see why they would do that personally. I don't think it makes any sense. But I would not mind uh, maybe giving Jurgens a chance at right guard if they're going to cross-train him. They could have a three man. They can have a three man competition. I mean, from what was said about Jurgens, our second round pick, it said that he's going to play some center and play next to Kelsey at right guard. I think they're going to move guys around. OTAs they actually had Isaac Samalo in at right guard, so there is definitely mm-hmm. the idea of him starting there. But I know his pass protection is definitely it's not great. You know, his, his, his run blocking is good, but his pass protection kind of makes me nervous a little bit. Um, yeah. I don't know how well he's going to play on the right side. I, I don't know in the past if he has played on the right side a couple of times. Um, but I think it'll be a three-man competition between Driscoll, Jurgens, and having Samal come back. So I think it's going to be on the competition. And and who would you give – who would you give the uh, – the like who do you think is the favorite to win that position? If Jurgen shows a lot of promise with having Jeff Stalin and and you know Kelsey right by his side, I feel like Jurgens should get the playing time and, and start. What if Jurgens plays fantastic and we're like, we can't move him from right guard, he's gotta be there. Now we still need a center. <laughs> yeah, we're in a we've already spot. we already did that with Landon Dickerson. You know what I mean? Yeah. Landon yeah, Big happen. Balls Dickerson. D- Big D we need a nickname like Big D Dickerson or something like that. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> big, 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 big
<laughs> I don't know. We need to come up with a name. No, I mean, you you don't want to you don't you don't want to move Dickerson from the left side. I mean, you don't want to move him to center anymore. I mean, you sounded so gross. You said that <laughs> you want to move the Dickerson to the left side. <laughs> I'm trying to say it the right way. My goodness. <laughs> I know it's pretty man. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I like Dickerson. I like Dickerson a lot. Pause. But right, you know, left guard, then you have left tackle. Um, yeah, it, it's gonna be interesting because I, I think Sayamalu probably wins that right guard spot, but I really like him on the bench. Like he's a guy that I can move all around. I like the idea of a swing guard like that. You know, um, it, it's a shame you don't have somebody else that could start, you know? Now, if you were, if, if you trade him, I think they save like 5.6 on the books. Yeah. Five, yeah. Five, so yeah, exactly. if they trade him, then great. Yeah, and, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm still waiting for deal. I don't know what's going on. Like we heard all these rumors about maybe Samalo, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, Andre Dillard, you know what I mean? Of, of these trade talks. So we'll see. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. Joe Higashi legit late kicks. We got to get it in. Here we go. What up Tubby 500 and Joey fat boy shakes. How goes the pancakes and the jello? Remember Eagles second past second round playoffs. You lose wedgie. You guys win booze, more cones that we all know. I, I don't know. I have not accepted no bets. Have you? No, not yet. <laughs> I haven't took anybody's hand on it yet. 500 likes to do one. Oh, I didn't see anything. <laughs> Dirk Diggler. <laughs> yeah, we need it. We need, he definitely needs a, 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 a name. Sean says, I got Wentz sweeping Philly this year. Ah. Listen, I, I think when, when you look at this division and you honestly look at it, I don't see how the Eagles are not ev on everybody's list as the best team. I, 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 I mean that in all sincerity. I think Dallas – took major steps back. I mean, like, can Dallas Cowboy fans actually be honest and say that they're better than they were a year ago? I I, I mean, I'm just being honest. I don't think they can. I think Washington, Washington, to me, has the potential to to at least be a sleeper, depending upon how Carson plays. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I think the Eagles – are the best team in this division. I, don't know. I mean, for Dallas, I mean, their offensive line took a hit. Jason Talbert, we don't know if he's going to work out for them. CD's becoming the number one now with Michael Gallup coming back, making a lot of money off of two injuries plus an ACL. So, right. and then Ezekiel Elliott's getting paid $18 million. And what is he? He's only had one good year on his new contract, his first year on his contract. And that's it. I mean, I mean, did you hear? No, no. Like I think the Cowboys are going to need a receiver by by the trade deadline, yeah. because you got Ceedee Lamb who I think is good, but but right. Gallup's coming back from from injury. I, you know that that kind of injury takes a year. There's already rumors. I heard some stuff now that that and I don't know if this is true, but but that DK Metcalf. There have been some reports that DK still you know could be shopped, and you know the question was asked: Would the Cowboys go after? DK Metcalf or Debo Samuel. I think yeah. that if they got either of those guys, it would be a problem. I, I think oh, that 100%. Would be a problem. Oh, yeah. You know, that I, I I honestly do not want to see Debo Samuel traded to Dallas or, or DK. DK. No. <laughs> That'd be a nightmare. <laughs> no, it would be a nightmare because I think if Dallas goes into season with what they have, I think they're the third place team. I got them finishing in third right now. Yeah. You know? So it, it's, 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 who knows? You know? Crazy. Uh, let me see something here. Hulk says, 500. I got your package ready. Send out money. All right, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I, I did respond to you, man. I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if I had to say early predictions for the NFC East, I would say Eagles 1, Washington 2, Dallas 3, the Giants 4. And I think that, that second and third, I think the first three teams may be close. I think Giants will be way down there. Yeah, way so down too. there. You yeah. know, too many new pieces. Yeah. Washington Commanders dysfunctional owner, defensive coordinator. And yeah, I mean, they're all dysfunction over there in Washington. They don't, they couldn't even get their name right. So, I mean, you know, I don't know what to expect, but I do know that, that they got some talent, though. I mean, we got to be honest. I think they got talent. They do. You know, uh, Badlands says regular to Dallas. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, right? That would definitely be nice. JJ Ortega, uh, you, you already hear the Ortega stuff, right? You're already hearing 
J.G. Ortega White's not a tight end. Was making some plays. He's looking good. Here we go again. You know, yeah. I, I, I I think that I just want him to go. I just want him to go. I just want to be done with it, dude. You know, the last year of his contract, it might be it. Might yeah. be it. Exactly. Duncan Wright, thank you for super chat, my man. He says, hey, Philly, what do you think of Bad Dog's stream just on Eagles comments? What do you mean? Well, I, did, I, didn't, I don't know what you mean. Do you know what he means? He's he, well, Yeah, he's doing – he did a stream just – so Bad Dog did a stream just strictly on all the Eagles comments, just every comment. He just did Eagles a stream talking to Eagle fans? Wow. I remember I remember him doing a stream. I don't know if it was recent, but I remember him doing something like that. Uh, a while ago? Yeah. Eh, you know, I mean, it, it's just repeating itself at this point because, uh, you know, I mean, how how many years can your team stink in a row that you have to keep answering the same comments for? I mean, you know, I feel bad for the guy. Jock talks yeah. five get Yeah, you get your wrench. Definitely. Um, Roro, uh, I think I said, I hope, I hope I pronounced it right. David super chat. The brother screwed us. The brother screwed us. Yes, he did. He did. Definitely did. Bad guards, bird podcast. David super chat says, let dirt diggler left side Dickerson. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Thank <clears throat> you for super chat. Let me, let me, let me get my man, Jock talk. Um, so, so, you know, we talked a little about the offense. I want to talk a little bit about, I want to ask you some questions about the defensive side of the yeah. Um, out of everybody on this team, like going in to uh to the to the season, who defensively, if you had to pick one guy, who do you think the most important defensive player for this team going into the season is? The most important. The most oh, important. Man. Like who has to have a good year? Hold on, I need to get my charger. Answer the question. I gotta get a charger for my. So most important player defensively. Oh man, this depends. I could probably say I could probably see I could probably say Nicobe Dean. I'd probably say one of the linebackers. I'd say Nicobe Dean. I'd say um Fletcher one Cox. One second, Joey. I'm gonna have to mute. I have to get something real quick. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I think I I think uh Nicobe Dean, I think uh Fletcher Cox needs a really good year this year. Obviously, two really big down years last year. Um. Yeah, James Bradbury be another one, definitely. I mean, our number two. I think he's a big upgrade from. Uh... Oh yeah, Jordan Jordan Davis. I think Jordan Davis is definitely. I mean, I'm not I'm like I'm not expect like I'm expecting him to have a big year this year, but I'm not saying that he's the guy that has to do everything either. So, I think you have to get, pick one of these linebackers because we need that position to be 100 percent this year. You good? Sorry, man. My my computer was down to one percent, and it was about to go off. And I realized I forgot to plug it in. And I went to go look for my plug, and my kids were using it, so I had to run and go get it. You're good. So I missed the answer. So so who did you say again? I was gonna say Nakobe Dean, and I, I don't know. I'm I'm going back and forth because I think so. I think our linebackers have. I mean, it's. We have so many pieces there now. I think that Kobe Dean goes into that middle linebacker spot and, and really wreaks havoc. I think Fletcher Cox needs to have a really good year this year, too, since he's starting next to Hargrave and having yeah. Graham back next to him. So, I mean, there's a couple guys there. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a weird question. It's a hard question. But I was just thinking, like, who on this team can't afford to not have the year we de- we're thinking of? And I was thinking Hassan Reddick. Like, yeah. like Reddick has to go out there. And he needs to be a double digit sack guy. That's oh, why you yeah. brought him in. If they if he if he's got five or six sacks, let's say week 12, week 13 season, there's a problem because you you brought him in. And my fear is that Jonathan Gannon will not use him properly. I think the Hassan Reddick has to get double digit sacks or we got a problem. Yeah. Big time. I, yeah, I think I think Gannon needs to Gannon's the piece the final piece to the defense so really when you think about it like I won't be blaming like depending on position like I won't be bl- blaming the players as much just depending on what happens but Gannon's like he's got we didn't think they were gonna get this many defensive weapons and, and they do and he's gotta make it work with his disguising coverages his four three three four whatever they want to do moving he has a lot of moving pieces in this defense so I mean there's no excuse 
Yeah, exactly. Oh boy, Tyler. Taylor, 500. Did the lady really use you for shade? Yeah. Dude, I, I was so pissed off. I, you know how you know you need to go on a diet when somebody uses you as shade. Okay, I went to this. I went to my daughter's middle school graduation, and I'm sitting there, and you know, like it was outside, and and you know, the class is all up there, and you could bring your lawn chairs and stuff so you could sit and listen, right? And I'm sitting there, and and you know, there's plenty of room, and then behind me, I feel this old lady breathing on my neck, breathing on my neck, and I'm like, what the hell, man? And I look, and she's all like up in my kitchen, like, and I'm like, why is she so close to me? I'm getting all pissed off, and all of a sudden, I realize. This woman is using me as shade so the sun doesn't hit her. Like, I'm being used as shade. I'm like, that's when you know. You know what I'm saying? That's when you know you need to go in. And she kept offering me a donut. She said, Denzel, watch, you want donut? Like, this lady's trying to fatten me up so so she could use me as shade. That's pretty bad, dude. Mm -hmm. It's pretty bad. So, so go on a diet if you're being used as shade. That's what I say. Skid marks. Nice picture. That guy is, whoever that is, is definitely used as shade. He says, nice tie, 500. Thank you. When I started watching your videos two years ago, I thought you guys are clowns. Now I look forward to watching them. I think with all the new pieces we got, it, it has to be two or three more wins. I, I think so, too, man. Yeah, I, I, agree. I think it has to be two or three more wins. And I, I appreciate that you, we've won you over. You know what I mean? <laughs> Joe Gaji says, tubby shade. 500 absolutely <laughs> but yeah i mean you know i i think i like i said i i really think that that defensively i think reddick has to have a big year i think you have to have double digit sacks and and if if you don't know how to use him jonathan gannon's going to be gone dude yeah do you yeah. think he could actually get fired in season no, I, it, they have to play really bad. I mean, they, they would have to really fall, like, below average. Like, they – I don't know. I feel like if they have no pressure, they're blitzing, or if they're not blitzing enough, or the adjustments are not good. Because the second-half adjustments – you know, we were successful with second-half adjustments here and there. But I we need to see against certain teams. Like, if we can't beat, you know, the better teams, it's going to mm. be a problem. I, I feel like it could happen if, if we play below par, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think to me, if, if, if Hassan Reddick isn't producing, then, then it's probably a, a lot of people not producing and, and it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's, it's a big problem. Yeah. It's crazy. 500. It was a 500. I'm a breadcrumb away from needing Jenny Craig. I'm about, Jenny. I'm, I'm, I'm about two myself. No doubt about it. Rayburn says we should trade for Mike Litteris. Oh, come on. Mike. Man. He's got <laughs> yeah. I almost said, like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I, I was going I was I don't know why I had to thought of offensive linemen. And I thought, oh man, he got me there. Because I didn't see I, thought, I read the mic, I thought I was in the clear. I thought it was like Matt Leonidas or something. That's what I thought it was, or something. Um, uh, Mike Litteris, yes. Philly, your pinky could give her shade. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. Man, you guys are brutal. Graham leads the line. Big man Slay leads the back. We need Riddick or 11 to step up in the middle. I, I mean, listen, I think Riddick has to be double digit. I think uh, I think he has to give you at least 10 sacks. I think, you know, if you could get between seven, we'll say seven and nine from Graham, seven and nine from Josh Sweat. I think that you're, you'll be okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. 23 and a half sacks in two years. And if they can't get more than that, I'm telling you. Yeah. Kareem Hunt's brother, Mike Hunt. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, you guys are killing me today, man. They're killing me. Hit the green says, why is Rager still in this team? I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Um, I think they would love to move him. I don't think they can get much form. I also think that, you know, um, my concern is that because he's a first-round pick and the way Howie Roseman is, that he's not going to want to just move on from him. And this is a fear that I have, and, and I've said this many times, and I'll get your opinion on it. 
I I think that if Rager's on this team come week one, he's going to be the third receiver. He's not going to be the fifth receiver. He's going to be the third receiver just based upon where they drafted him and how much money they're giving him. What do you say? For a guy that hasn't produced, okay, and I take his personal situation with what's happened with Jeff Gladney and everything into consideration of all his personal dealings, I, and I totally understand it. When is it, you know, it, it, I'm trying to say this the right way. When, when is it going to be the time where it, it's like he hasn't shown up? I mean, he needed the OTA work. He should have at least right. showed up to OTAs. And I understand, like, there's a personal thing with it, but I don't know if we don't know what's happening. I don't, I don't, I really don't know. It, it could be, you know, I, I don't, I feel like he's not going to be here. I, I feel like they added weight. They added a lot of receivers, whether they're starters, backups, practice squad. I mean, they added a lot of receivers, a lot of bodies. They even moved JJ to tight end. They added still more bodies. So I, I feel like there's just, Maybe it's he just needs a fresh start somewhere else. He just needs to go somewhere. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why they didn't trade him to the Ravens and what the whole point of that was. And you know, with the compensation, did they want more for Rager? I don't know. But um, you know, maybe it's maybe they're thinking and maybe it's time. Maybe they're just trying to find the right price for him. I, I don't. I don't know. Well, I think after the June first cuts, he's like I think he's only what is it like one point eight million dollars? I think now in dead cap hit. Right. So like. To, you can cut them flat out, cut them, and you can get away with it. So I, I would assume that they're going to do that. I, I would. But if they can trade them, then maybe they'll do that too. But, I, I mean, my depth chart for wide receivers would be this. I, I think right now you have – it's got to be uh, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. There's questions about the third one. Like some people think it, it's going to be Pascal. Some think it's going to be Quez. I'm going to go with Quez, then Pascal. And then I think the fifth receiver has got to be Greg Ward. Not not Rager. I agree. No, I you agree with that lineup. Yeah. Now, do you think you think Quez can play in the slot, or do yeah. you think he's primarily going to be outside? He's made some plays out of the slot. I mean, they can move him around. That's the great thing about it. I mean, he's made yeah. plays out of the slot, so I have no problem yeah. with it. He's on a number three cornerback, so why not? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, D nineteen twenty two Davis super chat, my man. He says, "What's going on, guys? Can't wait to see our team play my home team, Detroit." Oh yeah, man. That's a that's an interesting week one. Like Detroit, uh, you know, I think we should win that game. You know, yeah, I, do. I don't know how much Detroit's going to be better, but if dude, if they lose that game, it's going to mm. be chaos week one. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's gonna be nuts. It, it's going to be crazy. I it agree. would be it would be bad. Seth wrote, "Thank you for super chat, man." He says, "This D will struggle the first four weeks. Gannon is trash. Does anyone believe in Gannon soft ass ten yards off defense?" Because I don't at all. We need a new coordinator. I, Dave was super chat. I, I, I agree with you. I don't trust his defense at all either. Uh, you know, his complaints were, hey, I don't have the right personnel to do the things that I want. Um, and then he comes back, you know, during the OTA's press conferences like a week ago. And he's like, oh, I'm going to do a lot of similar things I did last year. I got to think that's a smoke screen, right? Oh, of because, course. Yeah. Because if, if you do what you did last year, you're going to get destroyed. You're going to get destroyed. Yeah, and, and then playing all that prevent and moving these corners, you know, 10 yards off the line, it, it's playing it safe and being cautious, not giving up the big play. Like, he just did not know how to move guys around. Like, the adjustments right. uh, were horrible. I mean, they were right. really bad. Yeah, Richie says, Quez does not run the entire out tree. No, but, but you know what? I think most of his receptions came out of the slot last year. So it's interesting. You know, I, I, I think you're going to see A.J. Brown in the slot a lot, too. Because I think there's a lot that you can do with him, you know. Right. So they, they, these guys should all be moving around, you know. Um, uh, Mariana says Kobe fifth wide receiver. It, let, let's talk about let's talk about your boy Kobe for a second, man. Uh, you know, apparently he's off to a pretty good start uh, in OTAs. He stood out a little bit. Um, what are your thoughts on him? What are you expecting from him? Uh, what what needs to happen for him to make this team? Yeah, stri strictly right now, he, I think he just needs good looks. I think I, I think it was between him, Kenneth Gainwell, Greg Ward, um, you know, Boston Scott. I think uh, they were sharing punt return duties during OTAs. Um, Goddard said that he's really shining in OTAs and and did really well. 
Um, I, as a start, I think it's just special teams right now. I think you just start him on that. But um, if he's showing a lot more, and I know he's he's a small guy, he's like five seven hundred, you know, five seven five eight one hundred seventy five pounds. But I think you can use him as that Tavon Austin type, you know, uh, guy in the offense, and use him for end arounds or jet sweeps, screens, you know, slants or go routes or something like that. I'm not saying he's a full time starter, but you know, I'm. Look, I mean, it, it's really not saying he's a bust because he's undrafted. So it's it's either he's going to work out or, or he's not going to work out. Um, yeah. But I I think he has more to prove, and I think he has a chip on his shoulder. And uh, I think I think he's going to shine a little bit, and we're going to see it. Anyway. And who's his main competition that he's got to beat out? It's the, the Allen kid, right? Devin yeah, Devon Allen, Allen. Right? yeah, Devon Allen. Now he wasn't. A, you said something to me. I didn't even know this. You said something to me about him earlier today. Yeah, the news came out today that Devon Allen uh, was out of all of OTAs um, well, for the virus. So he had the virus and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't practice at all for six days for a week. So pretty much that's that screwed him up. And uh, now he's missed some valuable time. Covey has had a lot, a lot more time now. So and this yeah. and you got to mention that this guy never played an NFL snap. He hasn't played since 2016, played for Oregon yeah. and never had a snap in the NFL. Went to, you know, went to uh, was a hurdler for the Olympics and, you know, which is great. You know, so, you know, this guy is, is determined and, you know, he runs a four three. He's got four three speed and he's missed some time right now. So and, yeah. they, and they signed him to a three year deal, which was kind of like, you know, like why weird. a three year deal? Yeah. Really weird. Um, so. I don't know. We're just, we're gonna have to wait till training camp. I mean, that's I think Covey and Devon. I think you're gonna have the competition special teams right there. Well, you know what I you know what I think that means. It means that they want him on the practice squad because they recognize he needs probably a few years to develop. Yeah. So I, I think that's not a bad. I, I'm totally okay with it. You know what I mean? I just right. wonder does that increase his chances to make the team or not? You know what I mean? Does that give him an advantage? Yeah. Taylor says, you guys are both the man. Been hanging around both channels since 2020. Well, uh, thank so you, much, man. man. We appreciate that. And Dave Edwards, man, thank you for the super chat, man. You're too kind. He says, Thanks, regular man. and the umbrella man need to go. I would hate to see them taking two very valuable spots on this team. We have too much talent to keep those two young guys, those, these two guys on the roster. I agree with you. I, I, I don't think you need either one of those guys. Um, but, you know, one of them's a first round pick, one of them a second round pick. And we know Howie Roseman and his you know his tendency to not want to let early picks go. Well too long. You know? I just want I just want to say this because we talked about it last week on the Philly Shakedown. Okay, since we heard all the rumors about Jeffrey Lurie backing out, you know, since you know backed off since the Sirianni hire, right? So Howie Roseman has had two pretty good off seasons so far. Now with the final 53 and obviously the extra roster spots, do you think now like how he's in full control and we're going to see a different Howie when it comes to this final 53 and maybe both of these guys will be gone. And since Lurie maybe has had a hold on Howie and maybe he will make the right, the obvious decision and to let both of these guys go. Right. I mean, so, I, mean I mean, it would be surprising. <laughs> You know the thing. The thing with the the final fifty three man roster, the, like the final three spots, is like sometimes that gets into, especially when it comes from like a GM or upper management, it gets into, uh, you know, compensatory picks, salaries, money, things like that. How much of it can a guy like Howie, who's up in the front office, how much can they be looking at the football aspects of whether the guy makes the team or not? That that's the question I have. They're know? looking at they're looking at where the guy was drafted, and it's too early to give up on the player. That's that's all it is. I mean, right? They're giving up too early, so it's like one year's not, two years not enough, three. You know, what I mean, like the time is starting to take. That you're going to JJ or take a Whiteside's fourth year and Rager's third year. Yeah. So it's just like you know, usually give wide receivers three years, but yeah, it's it's not. It, you know, what I mean, like they ha there's not been a flash. There's been nothing. I, I would guys. be I would be more up to giving Rager another year if if it wasn't like all the social media meltdowns and him coming in and then failing a physical last year and and you know and I feel really bad for him he's going through it again with losing yeah. a friend I just wonder where he is you know I I, I don't want to be hard on him. I feel bad for him but I he, do wonder for the betterment of his career 
Maybe he needs a change. He's got to stay off social media, period. He needs to get away from the media. He's got to work on himself. He's got to stop doing these dumb live streams on IG and the Eagle right. and listening to the hate from the Eagles fans. He needs to like literally just back away, get into training camp and ball out and try to. I mean, he's he's got to he's got to stay away from that. That's his downfall. And that, that's right. just his downfall, unfortunately. Yeah. So I agree. And Dave Edwards, thank you for that super chat, my man. Appreciate it. Monroe says, uh, Howie is prideful. He does not trade first-round picks. Howie usually does not own mistakes. He did with AJ. Uh, if Howie did, JJ would have been gone, and we wouldn't be talking about rigor. I, yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I think he is. He is stubborn, and 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 it takes a lot for him to admit when he's made mistakes. I, I, I agree. Um, but you know, we get those weird reports about Lori. You know, Lori been the one all along so i mean only time will tell i guess you know yeah it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting dude I, you know one other thing i want to talk about and it's not eagles related but you heard about this whole sean watson situation right oh, God. like the eagles were actively in on trying to get this guy do you what a bullet we Bro. dodged Bro. you know what i'm saying like could you imagine if we went <laughs> And we had trade for him. Now, people said to me, and we've asked, like, would you trade for Deshaun Watson? I was like, I wouldn't trade until everything, all these off-the-field stuff is cleared. And, it, dude, he's going to get suspended the whole year, at least. Bro. At least. We were coming off We were coming off our Super Bowl year. And when Carson Wentz came back, you know how annoying it was for him to sit there and us watch it where we couldn't hear football questions? It was literally about, oh, are you healthy? You sure you're healthy? You healthy? And he was tired of hearing it. Imagine right. this. Like, we wouldn't be making videos on football. It would be about this stupid case. And, like, Deshaun Watson has had a horrible OTAs. He's thrown so many picks at OTA. It, like, really, I mean – he made his Twitter account private. He he's throwing picks at OTAs. I mean, he's just been a, a mental. He's had like a mental block. Like with all of what's going around, like twenty six civil. So I mean, it's crazy. It's yeah. just just imagine, just imagine all the picks, right. all the right. money. That's what happens when you don't get your massage, man. You get a little cranky. You start, <laughs> I your, your arm starts tightening up. You know what I'm saying? Your legs are heavy. You got clogged plumbing, and, and you got problems, dude. I don't know whether to believe him or not, but it's not. It's not my. It's not my. You know, listen, it's not my, listen, my decision. But I, uh, listen, I always say somebody's innocent until proven guilty. But my God, when there's 24 people saying it's not a good look, it, it, how how can you possibly not wonder? And I didn't and, do it. and the and the Browns they didn't do their. How could they not do their homework on that? Well, that's. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they if they knew they were he was going to be on the exempt list or he was going to get suspended, like, why wouldn't they at least go to Roger Goodell? And be like, all right, what's what's going on? Like, or whoever's leading the whole the front thing for the NFL, like, what's going on? Like, if we trade for this guy, like, what's going to happen? Like, he's not convicted of anything, so I mean, he's not convicted. So, did you hear the last he? story? No, I didn't. <laughs> did you hear the, la the last story? It was like, it's like, it's like. His towel falls off and he's all ready to go. And she's like, don't want any part of it. So he just gets up and does it himself. And he's like, oh, don't mind me. Where do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. He's like, where do you want it? The walls, the, the ceiling. <laughs> it's, it's like, is this real? Is this like, what are we watching here? What is this? You know, Deshaun Watson does Houston. I mean, it's. It's like I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> Joey can't breathe. Oh my god, Sydney boy, thank you for super chat. He says, "Keeping it real, guys, man. Thank you so much, Appreciate man. It. Appreciate it." I'm serious, dude. That's what they said, and he was like, he told, and the woman's like, "Leave He's like, "Where do you want it?" You know, I was like, "Dude, like you're a football player, you make tons of money, and 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 this is what you're doing, like." What a whack job. Yeah, it's too many people. And coming pause. Forward I now. mean, what a whack because, job. Because, <laughs> because once one person comes forward, like, and there's over 26, I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, I mean, I mean, it's a lot of people, you know, it's like, but, but yeah, the last one was ridiculous. Like, he was like, where do you want it? It's coming. Where do you want it? You know, like, my God, dude. 
Like, I, I don't understand people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Clip this. Uh, yeah, right. What's up? I love weed. How are you? What's up, weed? Thursday, hit 302. Thank you for a super chat, my man. He says, just because a lot of people say something doesn't make it true. A lot of people believe in flat earth. Mm, that's true. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. All I know is, is I, I don't know. Like I don't know what to believe with the whole thing. I just, I just like we do, we dodged the bullet. We we it's dodged. Just, it's just bullet. I don't want any part of it. You know what I mean? Like like I'm just thinking if 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 you're the brown, if the Eagles would have traded for this guy, and then oh, this man. is still coming out, and he's going to be suspended a year, and you gave up all the all the all that, you wouldn't have a draft. Like what would you? You would have had a a quarterback under investigation and a horrible roster this year. <laughs> Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. And birthday's day for super chat. And and I love weed, right? Yeah. And and, and the article said he uses small town. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I swear it said that, dude. Everything I said was what the article said about the last uh person. You know, it's crazy. Cryptologists are there suing Watson for nothing. Where I live, all masseuses are hosts. <laughs> Oh boy! Born against it. the Earth is flat, not how you think flat, but it's not a ball. Oh, uh, well, here we go. I, uh, I'm just reading the comments. YouTube, don't don't shut me down. Monroe Hatcher says 500 and shakes. What's going on? Come on. If, if you're a masseuse and Deshaun Watson calls, head for the hills. <laughs> like get out of there! But it's insane, you know. And here's the thing. And and here's the thing with Cleveland, right? They have. Basically, they have Deshaun Watson, who probably gets suspended, and then now they have what's his face, uh, Baker Mayfield, who don't want to be there. You're building. And you didn't want them. It's it's not even not even that, but they they have been building such like a good roster. Like Andrew Barry has done a really good job over there, and like this guy totally is going to push them back years because of right. this. And it might. Yeah, but they but they told Baker Mayfield basically we don't want you. Now they need him, right? Now they need him to play. He don't want to what, play. What is it? What is he gonna do? Was it what, if you're him? What are you doing? You're like, nope, not playing. I don't know. I I, I probably would be. I'd probably play a little hardball, Paul's. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, look. Oh, you don't want me, but you want the guy getting all the massages, right? Yeah, you know. Like, uh, but he could screw. But here's over. the thing: is I could totally see that team imploding. By oh, yeah. week eight, week nine. Now, if you need another running back, Kareem Hunt may be it may be the perfect situation yeah. for a trade deadline trade. You know, yeah. I agree. It's it's crazy. I, I feel bad. I feel bad for the for the Browns, though. You know what I'm saying? I feel bad for their fans. Like, <laughs> you know. Torrey said, if the Eagles would have got Watson, it would be another movie with Howie screaming at him in the locker room. Yeah, except for <laughs> he, he won't be throwing up. He'll be in, he'll be, he'll be like, hey, Howie, uh, um, sorry my towel fell off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was gonna massage like my what are you gonna do off. with the guy with the small towels? <sighs> yeah. I, I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But dude, that that that's crazy, right? Yeah. It's it, it, it's really it's 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 crazy. I'm still working on the the Howie. And uh, Carson movie. That's going to be a TV series. A lot of people have contacted me and said that they like the idea. You know? Netflix. Netflix. So, so so let me ask you. I saw a question earlier. I forgot who asked it, but I wanted to ask you. Trying to get back to, to some evil stuff now. <laughs> After this Deshaun Watson escapades we just were on. Like, uh, who, if you had to pick one breakout player hmm. that can't be Jalen Hurts, who would it be? Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders. Miles. So you think Miles yeah. is going to have a big year? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, he's determined. Uh, he's had a, you know, he's been working his tail off this off season. He knows it's a contract year. He knows he's got to stay healthy, and uh, it's a big year for him. I, I feel like we're going to see a a, a a good Miles Sanders this year, over a thousand yard season this year. I do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy. Derek Barnett. I think I think Devonte Smith. I I I really see, I think Devonte Smith oh, have a monster year, man. Oh, one hundred percent. Like I think I think I think I'm I think Devonte Smith is going to have one one two hundred yard game. Mm. 
Like I think he's going to go off because I think he was he he's already that good. And then now you add AJ Brown to it, you know. But but I I, I think I think he's got to be one of like my breakout candidates. If if you can't say Jalen Hurts, you know. You know? You know it's crazy about him too. Even hearing the news that he this off season he was studying tape on Devontae Abs and Keenan Allen and looking at their um, releases off the release off the line and studying film on them how to get better. I mean, I, I love that he's he's what Devontae was doing this. Yeah, this yeah this this off season for he was looking at tape on Devontae Adams and Keenan Allen, which is great because. You know, this is a guy like you're not. You're getting a guy that's. I wouldn't say a, he's not a. He's not a, a selfish guy. Like he wants the whole team to do well. But when it comes to himself, like he will do anything he possibly can to get better at things he has to work on. You know, there's probably things he. You know, he knew he had to work on, or you know that he it would take another year. You know, so yeah, it's great. Love his attitude. Yeah, it, I, I I love Devontae. I, I I mean, I think I think he's a must year. He, you know, if yeah, I could see it. I, I'm very excited about. Devontae Smith pause, you know, and, and, and I saw somebody earlier, they said something about why did Howie, um, Howie signed Derek Barnett. If there was one move I do not like this year that Howie Roseman did, it was the re-signing of Derek Barnett. I yeah. do not like that move. But my theory is this, that they really were going to go after the kid from Michigan. Uh, I, geez, I can't Ojabo, remember. yeah. Ojabo, and he gets yeah. hurt. And then once he gets hurt and they're not taking the first round, they bring back Derek Barnett and then they focus on Jordan Davis. That's my theory, anyways. Because it, it, it's it would because I don't know if they were ever in on a clowny or anything like that. Even he would have cost a lot of money. Apparently, he got eleven million, but for the year, I don't know how much. No, I can't. I can't believe how great. much money he gets from yeah. Cleveland. Right? That I'm telling you, that team's going to be a mess. Yeah. By a weekend, you know. I mean, it just sounds like it, it. They're 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 ready for a complete debacle, and yeah. then they're going to be selling, and and we may be able to get a guy like like Kareem Hunt. Here you go, Seth Rowe, David Super Chase, the five hundred. Kareem Hunt is the last piece we need for the Eagles. I think a guy like him would complement the guys that they have already. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I do. I, I think so. It's it's crazy, right? I'd, I'd say I'd say yeah, I'd say Kareem Hunt. If not Kareem Hunt, if if Kenny Brooks doesn't work out, because I think you have Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott, Kenny Brooks doesn't work out. I think you bring Jordan Howard back, or maybe make a trade for Kareem Hunt. Maybe. Right. So. Yeah, you know, I see a lot of people talking about Quez Watkins. Let's mm -hmm. let's talk let's talk a little for a couple minutes about Quez Watkins because I I got a lot to say about Quez Watkins. I mean, um, to me, I think Quez Watkins is another guy that could break out this year. I, I don't know if there's going to be enough balls thrown his way to get like over a thousand yards or, or whatever. But I think that you look at a guy who's going to go probably against what the third corner um, yeah. going to be moved all around with AJ Brown. And there's going to be so much attention drawn to these other guys. I think he's a legit deep threat. I think that True. he can create, um, he can he can create big plays. I think he'll lead the team in average yards per reception. Uh, what are your thoughts of about Quez Watkins going into the season? The the yards he had last year should be the yards or more than that he should have this year, being as the number three because it's scary. It's really scary. Just imagine if Hertz actually you know saw him open on some of these passes last year and the amount of. I really thought, and I'm telling you right now, like I. We could have had at least an eight to eight to eight hundred to a thousand yard receiver in Quez and over a thousand yard receiver in, in, in Devontae Smith. Like I, I honestly think we would have had two guys close to uh, either over or under a thousand yard. I mean, just crazy what Quez could do. And you know, there right. were some passes from Jalen Hurts this you know last year as well that were so were inaccurate, and Quez found the ball himself and was aggressive towards the football too. And especially some third down situations, he caught some uh, amazing acrobatic catches. I mean, he. He saved us on a couple of of drives. Um, I think yeah. he's uh, I, I think he's getting better every single year, and he has been. Um, and I, I think he's going to do well in the slot. I think he's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I think he had like what do you have like two drops all year? Yeah, right. It was it was something ridiculous like that. Yeah, I I, I mean I think Quez's is, is ceiling is 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 really high. Um, I just hope that they give him enough work. That's one of the reasons why I want Rager to go because I don't want any risks. To getting, uh, to you know, anybody taking snaps away from Quez Watkins, 
I don't want. I don't even want Pascal as the third receiver. I want it to be Quez Watkins because I just think with those other guys, he's such an explosive force that that you're you're scary. Your 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 offense is scary. Uh, Dave Edwards, thank you for the super chat, my man. He says, "Are you guys considering a pregame show during this season?" Uh, I mean, something we we haven't talked about, but something we could do. Yeah. We did have a few things planned, but it's something we could possibly do. Definitely. You know, you, no, definitely consider it. Thank you for Super Chat. Jersey Boy David Super Chat says, with this all-season, talent isn't the issue. Now it's on the coaches that get the best out of players. No excuses. Should win the division. Oh, I totally agree. 100%. I mean, I mean, look, we talk a lot about Jalen Hurts and things like that, but, I mean, a, a lot of it falls on, on Nick Sirianni, Gannon, oh, yeah. Steichen. I mean, they got to put these guys in the right position, you know? Yeah, I, it's it's really up to them. Like, I, it's like good on paper, yeah. But I mean, this is that's why they kept the coaching staff this year. If you guys, didn't, you guys didn't know, like we didn't we didn't make any positional coach change. I mean, nothing. We didn't make any changes. They want to keep the same group in here. So obviously, you know, bringing new guys and this not confusion, but there's too many new pieces. So you have the same coaching staff going to year two, and this is it. Yeah. This is it to make this roster work. So, well, I, I'll say this too. You know, like uh, I think that there were times where they didn't put guys in the right position, and they didn't even use guys. I always go back to the Giants game where Devontae Smith goes to the coach and says, I want the ball. I'm open. I'm going to get open. And they didn't go to him, and he was open. Like, you have to you have to give guys the opportunity in a situation like that, especially when he's your first-round pick. So I want to see what they're going to look like it, it, with this passing game. I think it's got to be a lot better than it was last it, year. That that Tampa playoff game really pissed me off. It, it, it really did. But, I mean, not just not just for, like, this coaching staff had a horrible, like, and I understand it's the Bucks, but you, it, it was so bad, like, to where, you know, Miles Sanders was almost out for three weeks and you gave him all the carries, not to, right. like, the third quarter when you started to add Boston Scott in and Devontae Smith didn't get a catch till the end of the third, like, it's I'm watching these playoffs last year. Every playoff game was so great and so close. And I think the best playoff football we've seen in a long time, then oh, our yeah. game comes on and it's like, like, what the hell are they doing? Like Devontae Smith is like, goes up to Jalen Hurts, says, yo, you give, give me the ball right now. Throws a screen pass. I mean, he had like 60 yards and with a minute and a half. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. Like the amount of yards no. he would have had. It's, it's not. Yeah, no, I agree. Totally, totally agree with you. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to fall on these coaches. I think Jonathan Gannon is on the hot seat more than anybody, dude. I, I really do. Chris says, I really hope we are ready for the season uh, without any more, f uh, f yeah, flight till July. Yeah, I, I hope so, too. As long as long as they play in preseason and get get some reps in game-wise, I think they're okay. I think they'll be fine, you know? Yeah, I agree. Skid Marks, they were super chat. He says, does Deshaun wear – Goggles when he gets massages. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. It, it's just a That's wacky scary. story. Dude, That's dude and, and, and they also said that 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 and David Superchesky Mars, they also said that he that the that, that Houston was like kind of in on it and they were signing they were having people sign non disclosure disclosure agreements. So so what the what the hell is going on, dude? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's scary. it's it's whacked out. You know what I mean? Uh, Joe and it says 800 or more yards for quest. I think around 800 is what I have. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I definitely think so. Rudy, thank you for super chat, man. He says Smith was open every time last year. Listen, when you watch the all 22 of Devonte Smith last year and, and you go back and, and we did, I mean, he was open a lot. <laughs> he was open. Like a lot, they just didn't get him the ball as much. You know what I mean? True that. Yeah, Tim Parker. Uh, he says, "Yo, what's up, boys? Big shout out from Big Bird from Bird Gang Canada. Nice. Love you guys. So freaking pumped for season. Gannon is my only question. Yeah, Gannon is my number one question mark. Definitely, he's my number one question mark. And man, shout out to you up in Canada, man." Appreciate you, man. There's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of smoke screens come training camp, and if you think you're gonna get the, all the answers, they're not revealing anything. So, yeah, don't expect anything to be for, uh be true. Yep. Oh, Sw Timothy Looper wants. You know, I had the, I had the old swamp rat was mad at me a few weeks ago because I did a video saying that Jalen Hurts was better than uh, Daniel Jones, which he is. 
you know, but where's the swamp rat? Where's the swamp rat? Where's the swamp rat? You've been pizzled, double moon walkers, the giants always think. Thank you very much. Coming to iTunes very, very soon. Yes. Emmanuel says 30, three 1,000 yard receivers this season. Man, I, that's hard to believe. Now, let's say you did have three 1,000 yard uh, guys. I would think one of them's got to be Dallas Goddard, no? Like, are they are I, they gonna are they gonna stray away from him this year? I don't think so. I think Goddard's gonna have a big year. I, I think you're gonna see a lot of three wide receivers, but I still think Goddard's yeah. gonna get get a lot. He of had some drop. He had some crucial drops last year too. He dropped the ball a good amount of times last year too. Yeah, Goddard. I thought Goddard once once Ertz left though, I felt that Goddard took the next step too. I agree. You know, Definitely. it's amazing. It really was. Let's see. Do I think the NFL will ever come out with the official massage parlor of the NFL? If they do, the the, the owner will be Deshaun Watson, I'm sure. So are you going to the game in Phoenix? Uh, probably not going to the game in Phoenix, no. That's like, oh, man, that's got to be about – I don't know how long to drive. That. I, I'm, I'm going to say about 12-hour drive. Probably not. Yeah, I want football right now, too. Sure that. Yeah. Will Rager be an Eagle week one? That's I don't point. I don't think so. I think he'll be gone. I think he'll be gone. Yeah. Think so? I'm hoping, but I I think I think he's gonna go to. But the question is, is will he play it right? You gotta play it right if you're player two. You can't be like Ben Simmons. Oh, I'm not playing, I'm not playing. You gotta be like the way Zach Ertz was. Go to work, do your job, you know, do whatever they ask of you, and and ha- let the GM and let the front office have the opportunity to build up some trade value. That, what, that's what, what I believe you have to do. What if he misses training camp or some days of training camp? It's a problem. Who, uh, Rager? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt him. I mean, you know, what you want, even look, even if even if he's not doing well in, tra- in, in practices and stuff, you still say he was. All you want from Rager is to do what he's supposed to do, act happy, don't go on social media, and build up your trade value. The whole thing with Ertz last year where, you know, uh, we're in camp and people are like, hey, they ain't trading him, they ain't trading him. And I was saying they're going to trade him, but they're building up his trade value. He was coming off a bad year, injury riddled year. Right. And that's what they did. I think you got to do the same thing with Rager. And then maybe if there's an injury or somebody needs a wide receiver, that's when you strike. But but I, I I still think there's a good chance he gets traded. You know. Yeah, I agree. Question: The one I question I want to know, and I'll ask. Let me get a super chat. And I'll ask you. Uh, Ty Eagles fly. Dave for super chat. He says the player I want to see on the field so bad is Nicobe Dean. I was psyched when we get him. Uh, he gonna be a beast. So pumped. Uh, yeah. Listen, Nicobe Dean was like the steal of the draft in my opinion. I saw a thing where a video where they've given draft grades, and they only gave the Eagles a B plus for that pick. What? I don't understand how you only get a B plus for that pick in the third round. How's that not an A? Because Jonathan Gann is a second year defensive coordinator and our defense didn't play well last year. I don't know. I mean, I think it's based off of what we what we have around him too. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, just on the talent and the value of what he was in the third round, to me that was an A plus pick. You know, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. I, I don't know. No, no, what I was going to ask you, and, and we got 337 people in, oh, nice. in, in the chat. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you guys like. Make sure you subscribe. Click the link in the description. Go so about my man, Joey Shakes. We do this every Saturday, um, and we'll be on his show next week. And we'll also have some clips of this show for those that weren't able to watch the whole thing. Uh, so so look for that, you know. Um or if you just want to hear us say stupid words by accident, you know, I'm sure it'll be on there. But what I wanted to ask you was, Andre Dillard, like, well, like when I look at trade candidates, he is the number one trade candidate for the Eagles on my list. Now, I know people don't like trading offensive linemen, and I get it. I, I understand. But he can't play right tackle. He's only a left tackle. Um, and you're not – giving him an extension. You're not picking up his option year. So why not trade him? Because you don't have a backup left tackle. Because you have LaRaven Clark. That's really your only 
your only guy that's going to be, I mean, he plays left tackle, right guard, right tackle, and he's been hurt twice. We got, we actually, we acquired him off an ACL injury. And on top of all that, he's been hurt twice already. So you really don't have, if there's going to be a guy you trade, you know, you already let Nate Herbig walk. So that right. kind of hurt us. But I, I think Jurgens was part of the reason why they let him go. And they, tra- they put him on that RFA second round tender, but I don't know if they can afford to let him go right now. I think maybe they, I think they keep him on here till the trade deadline, or maybe there's a team that needs a tackle. I, I, I don't think he's going anywhere now. I, yeah. I, just, I don't. Yeah, see it. It's not looking like he is, and and I get it. I, I do, but man, I mean, what 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 do you think he's worth, trade value wise? What what would we say he's worth? I think a second round pick at least. In desperation for like you, him going to a team as a starter, or like just. Yeah, going to a team yeah. as like going to a team as a, I think he goes to a team, the right team. I think he could start at left tackle day one. Yeah. You know, I think you have so, to jack up the price regardless when you get close to the trade deadline anyway. Like yeah. I think it, I think the price gets higher. I hate the idea. And 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 I know that they're probably not gonna trade him. And listen, and, and I can't even disagree that it's that you should trade. Like 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 he, he is a offensive lineman, they're valuable. But mm. I hate the idea that at the end of the year he walks. You know what yeah. I mean? Or like you, I hate the idea that you're losing him for nothing. You know, I look, I look by the trade deadline to see if the Eagles are buyers, sellers. I, I think they'll be selling. I think maybe they will be selling by that time. So we'll see. The Eagles, you think the Eagles will be selling? See, I think they're going to be buying. I, I think, I think the Eagles are going to be in a playoff hunt at, at that point in time. You know, so you think if the Eagles are going to be in a playoff hunt by that time and they're playing like they're hot right now and they think they can add another player to, you know, depending on who it is, you think I don't think it'll move? be Dillard at that point. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a left tackle. I think I think at that point, like I think if you trade Dillard, it's got to be before the season starts. Otherwise, you keep them the whole year. Right. And 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 then what you give up is, let's say you're in the hunt. Let's say Jalen Hurts is playing good. Then you may, you know, you may be more apt to trade that, you know, second round pick or third round pick. I'm not going to give up one of those first, but, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get it. I get why people say you keep Dillard, the offense lineman. I, I get it. Anime says, yeah. why is every time we build our own line, O line depth, we start talking trades? Then somebody gets hurt, and we're blaming Howie for no depth. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's always the way it works, right? right. You let's say they get to the trade deadline right before trade deadline days. I Jordan Malai has been healthy all year. Let's trade. Let's trade Dillard right now, and then he'll get hurt. That 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 happens. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's true, you know. Yeah. Uh, Seth says I think they buy and sell. Yeah, I think. I mean, I I think potentially, potentially, but I, I mean, I can't see them trading Dillard at that point in time. But I could be wrong. You know what I mean? Maybe. It, it's going to be interesting. If we start off hot, we're going to trade for a key player. Yeah, like I think we'll definitely be buyers because I think by the time it, what, what week is the trade deadline this year? Do you know? Week offhand? nine. It should be week, week nine. nine. Every, yeah. Wow. So if it's week nine, I mean, that's pretty late. So, I mean, you're going to know if you're in the run. I think if the Eagles are are winning their division, looks like they're going to play off, they're going to buy. They're going to, that's where I think you could see like a Jesse Bates come. You know, that's, that's the kind of guy that you cream hunt. Somebody like that. I mean, remember the trade deadline 2017, we got Jay Ajayi. So, uh, yeah, it, it definitely – it is. And you said Jesse Bates. If Bates isn't playing, say he's not playing on that franchise tag and he just doesn't play the whole year and the Browns are doing really bad, you know, and, you know, maybe, maybe you know, they don't have a quarterback right now. Maybe uh, what's-his-face isn't going to play for Deshaun Watson. You know what I mean? So, I don't – if they're in a bad shape by that week, you know, the Eagles mm-hmm. could take advantage and say, hey, you know – if there's a player they have that's not playing for them right now and, you know, he comes in right away. Because really at safety, it's it's the depth that worries me. Like Marcus Epps, I'm comfortable with it, but it's really the the depth behind Anthony Harris and, and Marcus Epps I'm kind of worried about. Because if one of those guys goes down, like I don't think I have much, uh, you know, in Reed Blankenship and – um you, you don't know, trust Kevon uh, Wallace? Wallace? No, hell no. I if everybody knows me from all the videos I make, every time this guy comes up in any video, it, it's it's all talk, no play, and he he's never on the field, and it's it's just what it yeah, is. It's crazy. I, I I was really excited when they drafted Kevon Wallace, but 
I mean, with the injuries, you know, I, I don't know. And, and Davion Taylor is another one. I just, I just saw, you know, he was doing a press conference. Like he, he showed flashes at least oh, like yeah. he could play. And then all of a sudden he gets hurt again. He said he re-aggravated last year's injury. So he, he's a guy to watch because I think that in a perfect scenario, you got because they're white for one year. If Davion yeah. Taylor could, could become a potential starter, that would be huge for us, though. But I, I'm interested to watch him his third year, you know. Yeah, I mean, even find the right combination was like TJ Edwards. We kept seven linebackers like at the end of training camp. Like by, the, by the start of the season, we had seven linebackers, two running backs. Why are they keeping so many linebackers? Well, they want to see the right combination. And I think they found it with TJ Edwards and Davion Taylor and then started to really build. And then, unfortunately, he got hurt near the bye week and uh, hurt yeah. his knee. And then he couldn't play the rest of the year, which was a big loss. So, Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Bonsology says, I heard that Deshaun Watson was pissed when the Eagles got Jurgens. Why? Hmm? Is that, am I reading something wrong? Uh, no, Jer I just it just makes, it makes no sense. It makes Jerkins. no sense. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, maybe uh, they, he's a good offensive lineman, I guess. I don't know. Willie says, what's up, 500? As a Cowboy fan, our defense has upgraded, and I say it will be good, be a good game with us and y'all. Cowboys defense upgraded? I thought you guys kind of lost some guys at, at uh, defensive, defensive line, line took it, right? Yeah. So you, I, I mean, I, I can't remember. I think offhand who they who they replaced them with, but I mean, we'll see. I, I think Dallas also got hurt offensively, you know, because they lost some offensive linemen. They did draft one, um, it, but the receiver core is not the same, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see. You know. Let's see. Trade Dillard for – no, would you do that? Would you trade Andre Dillard for Jesse Bates? Yes. I would too. I would, I would do, do it. it. You you have to – I think because I have – because down the road, I think I have more – I have more faith in Howie Roseman to get guys in the trenches and get that backup if he really needs one. I, I have trust in him that with the trenches, we always go trenches before anything else. If they need a left tackle or need a backup, I think they'll be able to get one. Right. I agree. Right. Yeah, I, I, I would too. But I think I think that's got to be one of those – that's got to be one of those trade deadline things, you know? Yeah. Uh, what about Jacoby? Jacoby Stevens, what, what are your thoughts on him? I I, I mean, look, I, I, I liked – I liked when they brought him in. I, I really don't know what he is, though, in terms of. He's a hybrid you know. linebacker slash safety, really young. I mean, obviously, he was drafted last year. So I'm not expecting a big jump from him. Caught and brought back, right? He was cut originally. I don't, I don't remember. I think he was cut and brought back. So, I mean, I just don't know what he's going to be. You know, it, it, it'll be interesting, though. Yeah. You know, we'll see. All right, so we got 354 people here. Thank you so wow. much for being here. If you're new channel, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I, I guess we're, we're almost an hour and a half in. Any Anything else, Joey, you want to say before we we, we, we end this thing? Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, you know, we're getting to that point now where we're going to be hearing little, you know, pieces of news here and there. We'll definitely be, re you know, we'll be reporting that and, you know, uh, we'll we're, we'll have a couple more Philly shakedowns. Yeah. Um, before we we're on vacation and we're doing our thing at the end of the end of the month, and uh, you know, a, definitely a well deserved break. Um, and then getting back into training camp, and uh, I'm excited. I'm, yeah, I'm ready it should to be go. interesting. Uh, well, listen, guys, we want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, it, it was a blast as always. Like I said, you'll see some Philly shakedown clips coming out. Um, we're not gonna put the same videos on each channel. So there'll be little different ones on each channel. Yeah. And that's for those who don't get a chance to watch the whole thing. We've got a lot of people who say, yeah, we can't watch the whole thing or working. So we're trying to do that for them. So look for that. But I want to thank you guys for all joining us tonight. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, if you haven't liked subscribe, click the link in the description. So about my man, Joey shakes. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it guys. I, uh, yeah. I, uh, until next time. Um, We'll be back. I, I will be back. In the meantime, relax, chill out, and, and don't go to any massage parlors looking <laughs> for Deshaun Watson. And as always, <laughs> let's let let's let Michael Anthony Where's the Fitness take us out. Peace, guys. Peace.
Not time for one more play. The are bad. We have one Yo, more. Yo, you got to be motherfucking kidding. You got to be kidding me. Uh, we have no time for one more play. Uh, Look at this motherfucker what running. Are you doing? Running from what are you up. Doing? Um, what was that bullshit? That is not right. Oh, that's some bullshit. Go on, what's that? We had no time for one more play. But the referee screwed us. The brother screwed us. I'm upset, but the brother screwed us. At least they fought back and tried. Only Cowboys games. Yeah, you, 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 you literally. The brother screwed us. The brother screwed us. Yeah, we had one bad opportunity for one more play. And we're clear. We're clear. Nice. Dude, that's the 13th episode I did without pants on. 13th <laughs> episodes without pants. No pants. No pants on. Nobody would know. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. Hey, Mom. Do not come down here to the basement. No. Do not come down here to the basement. I'm working. I'm working, Mom. My mom always comes knocking on the door. Why is she always bothering you? I don't know. She's trying to bring me soup, you know? Could you imagine if I was really married and had kids and stuff? I'm passing my kids off. They're my, they're my sisters. But, you know, we don't tell people. No. You can't. You can't do I mean, that. No. I mean, what am I going to say? I'm a 47-year-old man. I live at home with my mom. You know, I mean, I never had a girl. I don't know the touch of a woman. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> I can't say that online. Oh, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Mom, no. Leave the soup up there. I don't care if it's cold. I'll take the trash out later when I put my pants back on. You know? What the hell, man? I don't know. These people are crazy, dude. I tell you what, though. I want to find some of Deshaun Watson's masseuses. Yeah. You know, I was thinking if I, I can't get any in real life, maybe, maybe I need to go the Deshaun Watson route. Just, just small towel? Just take it off? Well, I need a very big towel. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, you going to do? Well, what am I going to do? I can't tell people that online. But what am I supposed to say? You know, what am I supposed to say? Uh, yeah, I live in my, my parents' basement. I'm 47 years old. Never been laid. Don't don't know what touch of a woman. And, and and I got caught the other day smelling pe women, some woman's hair at, at, at the store. What am I supposed to say? You know, I can't say that online. People no. want to know the secret. I you know this. I got this out of cr uh, Cracker Jack. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Never been married, never been on a date. I'm the 40 year old virgin. Oh, well, oh my god, man, it, it gets harder and harder to, to keep telling these people that I'm married, I have a wife, and then I have to, to, to ask people if I could take pictures of them to pretend it's my wife online, you know. Because you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, I gotta find, I got one day, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta meet a girl, you know. Yeah. Instead of living in my mom's basement, dude. You know? Classy, classy broad, classy date. Jeez, <laughs> I don't. I never even know what. A, I never been on a date. How do you even ask a girl to go on a date? I do on computer. Do, 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 do. You know, simple. I yeah. I went up to talk to a girl at the store, and and she looked at me, and I I just I I pissed myself. Like I I just pissed myself right there in front of her, and she was like, "Oh, disgusting!" I was mortified. You know what are you supposed to do? That's why I live with my parents. I actually comfortable living with my parents, you know. You don't pay any bills or nothing. No, that's why I don't it's work. I don't have a job, dude. Yeah. I haven't showered in a week. You know why? I showered in a week. Why don't you because shower? Because what I have to do? I don't have a job. I got fired. I got fired. You know, I, 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 I didn't you do. do? What the hell did you do, dude? Uh, this old lady. I asked her. Um, I asked her if she had any Italian in her. She said no. I said, "Would you like some?" And they got <laughs> they got really mad at me. <laughs> and, and it turned out it was my boss's mother. <laughs> so, so I got fired. So you know, so I live at home with my parents. You know, every day my dad wakes me up. What do you think this is vacation? What do you think this is vacation? And I just play video games and stuff. 
eat, I eat Doritos. I, I, uh, my, tomorrow my mom's because I don't have a license, dude. I don't have a license. You, you know, how do you get the? Uh, I don't have a license. I never had. I, well, my mom used to drive me, but then I got fired. But tomorrow I got. I'm so excited because I got this magic tournament. I'm gonna go play magic with with these kids. I never know, knew but, that. But the thing is, I have to. I have to have their parents sign per permission slips because they're all like teenagers, and I'm an adult. You know what I mean? So you know, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, you can't tell people online this stuff. You no. can't tell them what this stuff. What are you gonna say? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know what the touch of a woman feels like. Is it soft? Is it warm? What does it feel like? And what happens when you do the business? Like, do you, like we, what do you think of? Because, like, like I probably won't last too long. I'm like, like three seconds, four seconds. That's not like, good. Like, 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 you know, I mean, look, they're 47 years all built up inside. You know what I'm saying? What are you gonna do? So you're ready to let it all out. Yeah, look, I, yeah, I'm ready yeah. to lay it all out. But I just don't know who the, the wonderful woman that that's why I'm thinking maybe I need to talk to Deshaun Watson. I could maybe I could find some of uh, them. You know. Maybe. Hey, what the are we love? Dude, wait. Wait, I don't think <laughs> wait, are we are we live still? <laughs> Oh no! I, no! 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 no. I, 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 time for one more play. We have one more. Yo, you gotta be motherfucking. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, we, we have no time for one more play. Look at this motherfucker what are you run, doing? running. Running from what are you a. Doing? Field, um, what was that bullshit? That is not right. Oh, that's some bullshit. Go what was that? We had no time for one more play. But the referee screwed us. The brother screwed us. I'm upset, but the brother screwed us. At least they fought back and tried. Yeah, you, 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 you literally. The brother screwed us. 